In prior blogs, I've discussed the many standards for safety and where you find those standards. In this blog, I'd like to touch on three particular sources for safety standards. The first, and we haven't spoken about this, is an insurance audit. A general contractor may ask an insurance company or some sort of third party, uh, some sort of insurer, for example, to come on the scene and to make sure that the job or project is being conducted safely and look for certain recommendations as to how it can be conducted in a more safe fashion. Obviously, you want to know exactly when that entity came out to do their safety audit. And more importantly, you want to know exactly what they've generated in terms of writing regarding what should be done, how, it should, how the job should be carried out. This would be very, very telling and probative information. Why? Because it's before an accident. And secondly, we would hold the uh, general contractor to the expectation that is laid out in the safety audit as to how the job is to be done. Second source is communication that exists between the general contractor and the employer of the injured party, the workman's em employer. There must be discussions or should be discussions between those two entities as to how a job is to be conducted. And it puts the burden, the onus, on the project superintendent or somebody from the general contractor to say, how do you expect this job to be done? What is the best practice? What is the safety standards and, and safety uh, tools that you want employed here? And then you have a source, again, that source being the injured employee's own employer, but information that had been funneled or sent to the general contractor or his representative. And that is important because that's yet another opportunity for the general contractor through their superintendent to be sure that things are carried out in a way that people who do that kind of work typically, the employee's employer, uh, expects. So that's the second item I want to bring up in this blog. Third item is at the time of a serious injury, unfortunately, OSHA comes. OSHA comes to the scene and OSHA is going to conduct interviews of everyone and anyone who is at that scene and perhaps ultimately will interview others who are familiar with what was going on. It's statements that that individual or individuals make at, the, at that time, at that very t telling time, right after an accident happened, that have the greatest uh, indication of reliability. Those are before people have, quote, gotten lawyered up, and those are going to be sincere statements as to what took place and what didn't take place. If it speaks to the issue of safety, as inevitably it will when OSHA is involved, those witness statements can be very telling. Yes, they're redacted in terms of the names, but usually you can surmise who said it, and you can certainly refresh a witness's recollection by showing them what has been recorded or, or transcribed by OSHA. And again, that becomes sort of the co-workers' uh, own statements becomes yet another source of information that will help you to pursue the case successfully on behalf of the injured construction worker. Thank you.